Hi, this is Ryan from Zoom Data. Today I'm going to show you how to embed a visualization in your own custom web page. The process is pretty straightforward. Here you see this, the sample visualization that we have at the developer zone. It's a packed bubbles chart, and I've also added to it a couple controllers that you can use to do things like change the colors and change the filters that are applied. Now we'll look over the code to see how you do this. Here's the code available for download at the Zoom Data Developer Zone, and it's pretty straightforward. It's an HTML page, and first you see we have a head. Here you see we have our HTML head element, and in the head element we use a script link to bring in the Zoom Data client library. The client library ships with every instance of Zoom Data, so you can find it at your instance's URL slash zoom data slash sdk slash 2.0 slash zoom data dash client dot js. This client provides everything you need to use zoom data data or zoom data visualizations in your own web application. I've also linked a simple style sheet and jQuery. Now here you have the main body of the HTML text of the HTML page. Uh, one thing to note is that the element where the visualization is going to be embedded has this ID visualization. Now I could call this ID anything I wanted to, like foobar or what have you, uh, but I've picked visualization. And later on when we actually embed the visualization, we're going to refer back to this element. I do that right here by setting a vis location um, as the document dot get element by ID visualization. So the visualization variable now refers back to this visualization tag, a div. Now to get started, we need to build our client. Our client's going to need a couple objects to take as parameters. The first one it needs is an application object. The second one it needs is a credentials object. The application object object tells Zoom data where to find its server. The credentials object provides the credentials necessary. You can use, either use one of ZoomData's source-based security keys, or you can use OAuth 2.0 protocol. Our documentation explains how to do both. Now, additionally, we're going to need a query configuration, but we'll look at that in a second. The first step we do after we've got our application and credential objects is we create a client using zoomdata sdk.createClient. The zoomdata sdk object comes with the zoomdata JavaScript client library. The only real use for the zoomdata sdk object is to create this client. Once we've created the client, it will take over the show. Now we create the client with the credentials and application parameters that we indicated above so that our client will log into the correct Zoom Data server and provide it the correct login credentials. Now, Zoom Data obviously is operating on a client server basis, and so requests might take a little bit of time to fulfill. So we use a promise system in order to delay the execution of Zoom Data's client functions uh, until previous steps have been fulfilled. So the next step is to build a query from our client, but we don't want that to execute until after the client has been created. So we use our promises then function. When the client is created, it will be passed to the callback function that's given to then. And here we give the callback function to then. So we create the client with the credentials and application object. And then when the client is created, we pass it to a then function and then that function creates a query. Now the query needs two different parameters. One of them is the name of a source from our Zoom Data server, and the other one is the query configuration object. Our source is given in the form of a simple object that has only a name element. Name, in this case, is a string, and the string is real-time sales, which is the data source we want to use. The query configuration object is the second parameter, and we have that defined up here. Query configuration objects have a few different possible parameters. One key thing is that if you want to use a time player so you can go forward and backwards, you must have a time field defined. Otherwise, you don't need to have a time field defined. You have to have a filters defined, though, even if it's just a null array. And you must have either groups or fields defined. Groups is used for aggregated or grouped queries, and fields is used for ungrouped queries or raw data queries. 
We also have a metrics defined as well. Metrics are optional. In the event of a raw, uh, raw query, for instance, using fields, you would use metrics. You would just specify all the columns that you wanted to query. So we, here we have a group uh, user city, and we've sorted it based on the count that is the volume of records for each user city. And we have metrics, and the metric is the price, the average price, rather than the min or the max price for each set of data. Now, once we've created our client, and then we've used our client to create our query, we can feed that query through another then function, another promise, to client's visualize function. Now here I've done something kind of crafty. I've attached the client to our window object. The window object is provided by the browser. And now I've attached client to the window object so I can refer to it more easily later. So I use window.client.visualize and I'm going to visualize the visualization with this. Visualize needs uh, a few different parameters, and it depends how you use it. In this case, we're feeding it a query that's already up and running, so we need to provide it the visualizations element in the HTML DOM. Remember vislocation up here? And vislocation was that div tag that we gave the ID visualization. It also needs a query, and we give it the query, which we pass in um, from the previous fulfilled function. And then we needs a visualization, packed bubbles. And it also possibly needs variables. In this particular case, we don't need to provide variables, so we won't. Some visualizations require variables. Um, we have documentation about how to use visualization variables in our developer zone, so you can look at that if you like. Now, the visualization will render from this function, and when it does, it will call this done function to finish the promise chain and attach the visualization, the result visualization, to the window um, under the name window.viz. So that's basically attaching a visualization or embedding a visualization into your website. That's not very hard, as you can see. Now we want to add a couple things to make this interactable for our users or interactive for our users. Um, I added this change colors and change filter button. So to do that, we use I used jQuery's uh, on method, which attaches an event handler to an element in the DOM. So I grabbed whichever element has this change color ID and the change filter ID specifically, and then I attach a callback function when they're clicked. So if you look back in my original HTML code, I have this uh, input button has a change color ID and this other one has a change filter ID. Now, the handlers are pretty simpler, pretty simple. All I do is I just increment to the next color, and then I grab that color from our array, uh, app colors, then the color counter. And here in this array, we have app colors, and the color counter starts at zero. So because I use this mod operation, um, it will iterate through, and when it gets the long the end one the last one in the array it will go back around through to the beginning again now i use the visualizations data accessors uh, data accessor allows you to use the chart variable in this case bubble color um, and interact with it and our chart variable for this visualization um, bubble color is a color data accessor so it includes this this method set color set and then I pass it the color set from the array uh, using the count value that we've iterated through. Um, I do the same sort of thing with the filter down here, where I have an array of filters that I've defined up here, four different filters, one, two, three, four. Each filter needs an operation, like in or not in. Uh, it needs a uh, path, a column, or a field name. Uh, we call it path in our filters. And in this case, I use the filter or the path group because we're going through product groups. And then um, the values, it's either in, for one filter, it's in the women's or men's sections, um, or it's in the men's electronics or jewelry section, or else it's not in those sections. 
Um, so these four filters make our filter array. And we do the same thing where we have a counter that each time the button is clicked, the counter will increment one until it gets to the maximum, the highest number in the array. And then it will loop back down to zero again using this modulus operation. Um, also, again, we're going to call window.viz.filters and add that filter. This particular um, method adds the filter and also it removes any existing filter if the filter uses the same filter path, if it's on the same, um, if it's on the same column. Uh, so if we already have a group filter in place, then the new group filter will replace the old one. So in this way, we um, add these controls so that when we look at our visualization, we can change color and iterate through, I think it was six or seven color sets until we get back to our original. And we can also change filters until we get back to our original. Um, so that's it. In a nutshell, uh, that's how easy it is to embed a visualization and how easy it is to add some simple HTML controls so that your user can interact with it. Uh, we have more documentation about how to do this and how to use the various methods at the Zoom Data Developer Co Zone, which you can find at www.zoomdata.com developers. Again, I'm Ryan Haber for Zoom Data, and uh, have a great day and happy embedding.